Deal sourcing terms and condition. Let's talk about deal sourcing terms and condition. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's talk about deal sourcing terms and conditions for people who are in the UK uh, who have been following this channel and you want to learn how to wholesale real estate from the UK. Let's be clear, we're talking about wholesaling United States houses from the UK. I cannot teach you how to wholesale United Kingdom houses or any other type of houses for that matter. My scope is the United States but you can absolutely do it from anywhere in the world as long as there's decent internet and there's a laptop okay if you have those things in place then i got you okay and yes you can make a lot of money and uh, i did another video recently no you don't need there's no specific guidelines or anything crazy outside of some of the states that we specify that you should try to avoid i cannot tell you that on this video because that can change over time okay but when you go through our courses we do talk about that but honestly you don't really have to worry too much about that as long as you're not representing the interest of buyers and sellers in any capacity um that's based on your action you know it's not just based off of you say i'm not doing it like if your actions uh if your actual spells out that you're you're representing the interest of sellers and buyers um you're required to have a license to be licensed as an agent in most states in the united states but that's not what I teach here. Okay, if you go to uh, real estate classes, they teach you law. That's not what I teach you here. I teach you how to market, how to generate leads for the real estate industry, how to find motivated sellers for investors, how to find motivated sellers for uh, real estate agents, and get paid from uh, from securing equitable interest or rights in such houses. You're strictly in it for profit and not necessarily to represent somebody else's interest. If you want to do that, that's what they call being an agent. And that's what you do when you go to the class and get licensed. That way the state is monitoring your moves and make sure you're not just, you know, eating people's money up. But the truth is that if you're in this for profit and everybody's aware of that, everyone can appreciate that in a capitalist society. So, but anyway, let's get into it. So we're talking about, um, we're talking about uh, deal sourcing. So in the UK, there is such a thing called the deal sourcing. Uh, everywhere in the world, there is deal sourcing. Everyone where there's people, um, people need a roof over their head, houses, or even over their head for the purpose of an office. There are buildings that people have to hide under when there's rain and there's sunshine, right? Those, that's what we call uh, real estate development, right? Improvements, as they call it in real estate license classes, right? Now, with that being said, right, um, as long as those, 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 those things exist, then there's such a thing as deal sourcing, meaning you find deals for professionals, for investors, you find deals for them, they will happily, remember I said deals, right? They will happily pay you a little token, a fee, for helping them find deals because this is their bread and butter. This is how much, this is how they eat, right? This is how they feed their family. So they will happily worship you as long as you master the skill set of bringing them deals. And that's what deal sourcing is. Now, the reason why it's a little bit different from the United States uh, real estate wholesaling because it's kind of similar is because the subject of deal sourcing is still the house. And from what I've learned, there's no contract involved. You basically have to trust a person that you give them the you like you go to somebody and say hey i know this person wants to sell this house the house is worth 400 pounds sterling right and uh but he's looking to get rid of it for 50 50 000 pounds right like you go to an investor you tell them that and they secure that deal and they give you ten thousand pounds they're happy <laughs> right everyone is happy you're happy too just because you let them know you give them the word that somebody is looking to get rid of a piece of property for a lot cheaper than what it's actually worth even if it needs some repairs right that's deal sources no paperwork uh, required but if they stole that deal like let's say they paid the 50 pounds but they didn't give you your 10,000 pounds there it you cannot sue them because you're not licensed agent and you know again this is you have to kind of trust them from what I understand keep in mind don't quote me because I don't live in the UK 
okay but in the united states you are a little bit protected mentally and legally okay the idea is not to go out here and try to legally file for somebody who stole money from you is that people actually honor when they sign the paperwork they have a tendency to honor the paperwork so here it is the the subject of the deal is the contract you lock up a contract that says you sell me this house for fifty thousand thousand dollars let's say use dollars now right and that fifty thousand dollars you assign that contract that contract is on your name you assign it to somebody else you are trying to assign it to an actual buyer that will execute that contract and they pay you an assignment fee for ten thousand dollars so they really can't circumvent and go buy that deal because your name is the name on the original purchase contract and that's the difference okay so the terms and the conditions in the contract would have stated that you can assign the deal okay even if it doesn't by default you can assign it unless there are specific restrictions by the powers that be that you cannot assign a deal but for the most part if it's a clean deal which they do exist you can literally assign it it just means you assign your right in exercising the purchase contract to another person they pay you a fee the person that's selling get their money the person that wants the deal get the deal everyone is happy but you're protected by the paperwork and the very mental state of a person that signs the paperwork they have a tendency to honor it and if they don't honor it i don't i don't honestly i don't teach people to chase after them because you don't have to worry too much about that uh, the job here is volume volume consistency uh, locking up contracts and flipping those contracts that's how these things work right and if you do anything besides that you can end up earning yourself because again you're not trying to represent interest of sellers or buyers you are not an agent so don't act like one keep this strictly clean to marketing you're learning the marketing skill set a lead generation skill set you generate those leads you make money realtors are happy attorneys are happy title companies are happy there's a bunch of people that are happy when you create this kind of deals just because you learn how to generate leads on the internet and yes for folks in the UK, you can do that for the United States real estate market all day long, uh, right from behind your computer. Okay? Uh, yes.